one question I've kind of had at the beginning um, when looking at this basic circuit diagram for the Don Smith circuit, and, and this is really all I have going on at the moment, is this L2 coil. Is this one coil or two coils? And I think what I'm seeing is this definitely two independent coils. If you think back to Don's three coil setup, which was one of his first devices that he built and learned from, you know, he had one transmitter and three receivers. And to me, I think this is a basically a two receiver setup with the one transmitter being the L1. And I can give you some examples in the next few moments of why exactly I think that. Okay, so I have the bigger coil set up here, running. And now let's take a look at our kind of typical approach. I'll short out the capacitor. And in this situation, you're going to see something interesting. Running on this coil setup at about 1.78 megahertz. As you see, the trumpet wave starts to rise. But then, it's almost like we have two separate trumpet waves. One seems to be coming from one of the other coils, and then it hits its final voltage uh, earlier. As we've seen from previous experiments, there's this band that you operate within. On the low side of the band, you get a lower final voltage, but you get there more quickly. On the high side of the band, it, you get a higher final voltage, but it takes a longer time to get there. And I think this is exactly what we're seeing. I actually have a trumpet wave on top of a trumpet wave because L2A and L2B are receiving the transmit signal and responding to the transmit signal a little bit differently. Okay, now here I've basically moved my L1 completely inside L2B. You can't, uh, it's kind of hard to see through the crack a little bit. But look at what's happening. So I've had to increase the, the L1 frequency quite a bit to 2.3 megahertz. And if I short out, we're not seeing that kind of stepped up configuration, but we're kind of back to a normal trumpet wave. And we have a very high coupling between L1 and L2B, which probably also attributes to the very high final voltage that we get to. Now if I move my L1 basically completely, nearly completely, um, inside L2A, and we get a slightly different response. Now remember here I still have my oscilloscope measuring um, L2B, but let's see what happens on the capacitor. And I've had to actually now reduce the frequency to respond to L2 a, a little bit better. It's still a trumpet wave on L2A. And you can see what's interesting here is, let me do it again. There's a huge voltage gap between these guys. L2B is not contributing to the capacitor voltage in any way. So now we actually have to think about this a little bit because this poses an interesting problem. If we do think of these as two independent coils, we have a couple things going on that's going to make tuning very complex. One, I can definitely tune individually with some additional capacitance, um, some variable capacitors that would probably be easiest, but then we also have the coupling to deal with of the L1 inside the different L2s. When one is more coupled to another, you might get still a stronger output of one than the other. And how to deal with that, as well as tuning the capacitance at the same time, may pose a challenge. But it's something I think we'll have to consider as we develop the system further. Thanks for watching.